CQRS or Command Query Responsibility Segregation is like splitting your brain into two. One side for making decisions or commands and one side for remembering stuff like queries. Commands changes things. Think of adding to cart or updating profile. Whereas queries just ask questions. For example, what's in my cart or show me my friends. So imagine this to-do list. Adding a task is a command here. It changes the list. Checking off a task is also a command. It updates the data. But viewing your task, that's a query, just reading information. But why split them? It's mainly because of performance. You can fine tune each site separately. CQRS lets you scale each site independently. Need to handle tons of reads? Beef up the query site. Plus, you get flexibility. You can change how you store data for commands without messing up with queries. CQRS, however, does add complexity, but for apps with heavy loads or complex logic, it's a game changer. Now, whether we are building a simple application or a complex microservices architecture, it is common to design a separate data model for each component. This model is stored in a chosen database and its data supports all service operations, which are usually exposed through RESTful APIs. This method is effective for most cases, particularly when dealing with straightforward cases with create, read, update, and delete operations. In a traditional layered architecture, CQRS divides core application logic vertically, resulting in two distinct models, one dedicated to reads and the other to writes. Unlike CRUD, here read operations correspond to queries. The create, update, and delete operations are handled by commands. So in CQRS, command is similar to create, update, and delete operations in CRUD but with a key difference in focus. CRUD focuses on directly manipulating data in the database. For example, creating a record or update an existing record or delete a record. CQRS focuses on expressing an intention to change the state of the system. It represents an action or request that the system should perform, not the specific data manipulation itself. Think of it this way. In CRUD, you tell the database, update this row with these new values. Whereas in CQRS, you tell the system, place this order or change the user address. Key point to note here is that commands don't directly change data. They trigger actions that lead to changes. Because there are situations where optimizing a single model for both reads and writes become extremely challenging if not impossible. This often happens when different types of users interact with the system in diverse ways. For example, in a healthcare platform, doctors are updating patient records, administrative staff are scheduling appointments, insurance companies are processing claims, and patients are accessing their medical history. Each group requires a different view and interaction with their data. CQRS is particularly useful in scenarios like these, where write operations involve complex business logic, asynchronous processing, or when read operations require sophisticated queries. So in a typical CQRS flow, a command is issued by the user or another part of the system. The command is handled by the command handler. The command handler processes the command and makes the necessary changes to the right model, potentially resulting in events being generated and updating the database. The events are then used to update the read model. The data is used for the queries. Using different read and write models allows us to optimize each site slightly differently, generally for performance. And since we still use a single database, we can commit write and read model changes in a single atomic transaction to ensure consistency. Now this style still keeps things simple, but let us optimize our queries slightly better. So another approach is to use separate database for reading and writing, allowing for polyglot architecture where you select the database that best suits the needs of each site. The choice of databases will be entirely dependent on your team's preferences and the application's requirement. For instance, you might opt for something simple and cost effective like S3 buckets for the right site while choosing a database with superior query capabilities such as Elasticsearch for the read sites. A relational SQL database might be better fit for one site, while a NoSQL database could be more suitable for the other site. So based on your data access patterns, the setup also enables independent scaling of each site. And because we are using different databases, it's not possible to commit changes to both the write and read models in a single atomic transaction. Typically, Changes made to the write models are asynchronously propagated to the read models through messaging or events, resulting in eventual consistency. 
However, with this approach, it can be challenging to keep everything in sync with using separate read-write databases and eventual consistency. Because the order of events published from the write to the read side becomes really important. Imagine that the same write model instances is updated twice in close succession. If the first update event is delivered after the second event, our read model might be updated with the stale data. Unfortunately, most asynchronous message buses are designed for high availability and performance, which means they don't guarantee that messages will be delivered in the order they were published. Event sourcing offers a solution to this challenge by adopting a fundamentally different method of storing our write models. In my next video, we'll deep dive into event sourcing and explore how it can address these issues. Stay tuned.